everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop and we've got a great one for you today. And in today's shop video, we're going to be talking about how to select and rig a trailer for your wintertime jig fishing. If you've watched my videos before, you know that a skirted jig is one of the best cold water tools out there, period especially when the fish are low and slow toward the bottom. That jig in cold water conditions has caught as many fish as any other bait times a hundred in cold water conditions. And the reason is pretty simple, right? Fish are lethargic, their metabolism slowed down. When they get toward the bottom, a skirted jig slowly crawled on the bottom or swimming around the bottom is a great mimic of what they're feeding on. Whether it's small bluegill, small bait fish, little tilapia, or crawfish, this thing's a perfect imitation. But picking a trailer is just as important as realizing the jig is a great tool in cold water period, okay? All right, so there's your skirted jig, and I wanna to talk to you a little bit about water temperature and selecting these trailers. True wintertime water temperatures, the coldest water of the year that you experience, no matter where you're fishing. Generally, when I'm talking about wintertime water temperatures, we're talking about from the 30s all the way up to the mid 50s, the mid to maybe upper 50s. I want to use that as a segue because once that water temperature gets to the upper 50s and it hits that magic 60 degree mark, I'm picking crawl trailers. I'm picking crawfish style trailers, trailers that have a moderate action to match that moderate water temperature, right? But that's more like spawn and post spawn. And we're not talking about that today. We're talking about wintertime trailer selection. And when that water temperature is cold, mid 30s to mid 50s, I want to pick a trailer that has low action, a neutral action trailer, okay? Not no action, but neutral, low fluid action. And my opinion for that cold water wintertime trailer selection, there's no better choice than a chunk style trailer, a chunk style trailer. And we're gonna be looking at a few uh, right here. I am in love with uh, Maxent uh, chunk style trailers. And I also really like the Berkeley Powerbait style trailer. So uh, we're gonna utilize both of them, but I really want you to look at the shape of the trailer, okay? The shape of these chunk style trailers. And I'm gonna show you two. We have the Berkeley Maxent Meaty Chunk, and we have the Berkeley Maxent Power Chunk, okay? And I want you to look at the difference, and this is gonna help me figure out which one I wanna use. And when you look at that, one is, the the, the power chunk is a traditional chunk style trailer. A traditional chunk style trailer. And when you look at the meaty chunk, you see more of that rabbit ear style trailer. And so I like to pick the style of trailer based on that water temperature. And when it's cold water, like super cold water, and the fish aren't as active and they're more lethargic, I like the traditional chunk, okay? The old school chunk. Out of these two, it has the least amount of action. It's the most neutral moving. So for colder water, less active fish, that regular chunk style is the deal. But when it's cold, but it's warming, or it's moderately cold water, or you're dealing with 
cold water and a warming trend where fish are more active, I like that rabbit ear style chunk, right? I like that more of that, that rabbit ear style, uh, a meaty chunk. And they're sort of the same, but little tiny subtlety in the way they move, okay? So super cold water, uh, inactive fish, cold front day, the traditional chunk, cold water but warming or a little more active fish, moderately cold water, the rabbit ear style chunk, okay? All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is matching the chunk size to the jig size. And it's very important, okay? Because in the winter, we're gonna utilize different size sizes of skirted jigs, okay? And I just picked two real quick, but you could go up or down on the same scale. And I wanna show you what I'm talking about. All right, I've got two missile jigs in my hands right here. And I use both of these in the winter a lot. The one on my left hand here is a full size missile flip out. Look at that, look at, look at the size of that, full size, right? Big hook, big skirt. It's big profile, right? The one in my right hand, look at the difference. Look at that, head to head. Just look at the difference in profile. The one in my right hand is a missile mini flip jig, okay? Missile mini flip jig, which is, everything's compact. Thinner skirt, shorter skirt, shorter hook, shorter head, okay? And in general, when the bass are feeding on a bigger profile forage, and when the bass are more active, and that cold water is warming, right? Just like we talked about those chunk styles. I picked the bigger jig, but when the fish are feeding on smaller forage, I wanna mimic that, right? When they're feeding on smaller forage, or the fish are lethargic and inactive, I'm more apt to go to the smaller profile jig, okay? And that same theory, I'm gonna use on that chunk selection, okay? I'm gonna use on that chunk selection. Uh, we'll go over here to the, we've got the, the Berkeley Power Bait chunks, same thing as the Maxent chunks. I wanna break two out and show you. There's our three, two, five. That's our uh, regular, uh, power chunk, just like in the Maxent. And then, look at this little killer, guys. This is the meaty chunk, power bait meaty chunk, 2.75. Wow, crazy. But look at the difference in size of those trailers. And it's real important for me to match that trailer, the profile, with that jig, okay? So let's start with that big jig. Let's start with the big jig. When fish are feeding on bigger forage, right? Could be big crawfish, bigger bluegill, tilapia. When the forage is bigger and they're biting, right? It's, it's, it's a day when even if it's cold, the fish are biting. I want a full size jig. And I want to put that bigger chunk on there and I want to make the profile bigger. I wanna make the profile bigger. So the way that I do that is I don't thread the chunk on the jig. I actually punch the chunk through the fat, okay? And when I do that, look at how long it makes the profile of that bait, right? It increases the size of the bait uh, it, it gives it that big, that big look, and that chunk has that nice, fluid, subtle movement. But before I do that, before I just punch it through, I'm gonna show you a couple little in the shop secrets modifications that I make to make this a, big, a better trailer setup, okay? Number one, why, actually why it's on here, I'm gonna leave it on and show you why I do this. If we were to just punch it through the fat like that with nothing else. That chunk has a tendency to move up and down the shank of the hook pretty fluidly. 
The bad thing about that is when I set the hook, if that chunk had pushed forward, the fish hits it and moves it forward in his mouth, I don't want that chunk to come back on itself. Look at that. I don't want that because that's gonna cause miss bites. So there's a system we can use to get that chunk when we're punching it like that, when we're punch rigging it, to stop flopping around. It's, it's real simple with, with today's stuff going on here. First thing is, you've seen this before in some other videos, but save your old soft plastic stick baits. I've got in my hand here, I've got five and a quarter inch Berkeley Power Bait Generals. One of them is Max Scent, the others are Power Bait, doesn't really matter. I save these things and I'm, I'm going to use these ripped up pieces of stick bait as a spacer for my jig and that chunk style trailer. And basically, I, I like to cut, uh, I would call it about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. And I like the fat end of that stick bait. And I just get my scissors and I just guesstimate it. And I just cut that segment off like that. And I'm going to thread that piece of broken stick bait on the hook. Look at this. Ready? Watch this. I'm just going to thread it all the way down and around the bend of the hook. Look what I just did. Look what I just did. I gave it a little bit of body, which is great, right? Because it adds to the profile. It's got a little scent in there now, which is awesome, right? That's Berkeley Power Bait, so you got a little scent. It's got something when the fish grab it, it feels real instead of just the shank of a hook. But more importantly than that, now when we punch rig that chunk, when we're rigging it on a, remember, full-size jig, full-size trailer, punch it because we want it long. Look what this spacer's doing. Watch this. Check this out. You ready? Look. It won't let, look at it. It won't let it get back there. I can't, it won't hook itself like it would if, if you didn't have that spacer there, okay? So I use a spacer, but I take it one step further, and I also want something on the front of that punched chunk to stop it from sliding forward the other way. And VMC came out with this amazing little piece of terminal tackle, and the great thing about them is they're super cheap, and it's called the crossover cap. And if you look at it, basically all it is, is a little lure stop. I'm gonna show this thing to you in a second. Um, they're clear, so they're, they're invisible to the fish, right? They're clear. And it's basically just a little silicone stop. If you don't have these crossover caps or you don't have a lure stop, you could also use a large size or extra large size weight stop, just like you do for Texas rigging the same way. But here's that crossover cap and it's got a little hole punched in it and I just slide it right over that hook and I slide it down. Look at this, you ready? I want you to get a good look at this, what it does. It provides a stop on the front side of that chunk. So now that chunk is fixed. That chunk's not moving anywhere. It's never going to get over the eye of that hook. Your hookup ratio is going to go through the roof. One last modification, and then I'm going to get onto the small rig too. And I'm a big believer that allure a lot of times, even in the winter, but especially in stained to dirty water, not as much in clear water, but in stained to dirty water, I want this jig to have just a little bit of sound, right? I don't want it to rattle and, and knock like a, a rattling crankbait, but I want just a little bit of sound in that jig. And the last modification I make is a real easy one. Same thing, just like the, the VMC crossover caps, I use these real little, um, these are eight millimeter glass rattles. Super subtle little, super subtle little tick 
You can get these at Tackle Warehouse. They're real cheap. And my last modification is, remember that spacer that we put on with that broken piece of soft stick bait? I get that glass rattle and I insert it. Look at that. There's it halfway in. I just push it down, make sure it's nice and straight into that body. Now I've got a full-sized profile jig. There's that regular chunk style lure. It's big, it's fluid, it won't flop on itself, and it's got a little bit of sound. Stay in the muddy water, it's a big modification, okay? All right, the next one is when the fishing tightens up, it's tougher, it's cold front, uh, the fish aren't biting, super cold water. I still wanna use that chunk, right? But I like to go to a smaller chunk and instead of punching it on, right? When we punched the chunk on, we increased the length. But when the fishing's tougher in the winter and I'm using these chunk style trailers, now I wanna thread it on, okay? I wanna thread it on, on that jig. And so instead of just punching it, now I'm actually gonna thread through the fat of that chunk, okay? And it's just like you would thread anything else. And here it goes, I'm gonna thread it through. I'm gonna wait till it pops out the bottom of that fat. I want it coming out all the way at the bottom of that fat on that chunk. And I wanna spin it all the way up over the keeper. And now look at that. By threading it, I've created a nice compact package. It still has great fluidity and movement, but this is what I want when the fishing's tough, when the water's super clear, when they're feeding on smaller forage, when there's a cold front, right? Big forage, big, big profile, biting fish, warming cold water, cloudy days, prefrontal conditions, active fish, right? That's what I want. But the opposite, cold water, little forage, cold front conditions, inactive fish, small profile. So by threading the chunk in this winter period, when it's tougher, I get a jig that's a lot more subtle, smaller, neutral, um, and it's a great little modification. You can still use a glass rattle if you're fishing and staying in muddy water, just by inserting it into that fat part of the chunk, and you could get a nice little rattle just like on that. Um, last thing I want to touch on, on these trailers, and it's a, it's an old, man, forever, since I was young, it was an old argument of fat side up or fat side down, right? I could also turn that around and had fat side down. There's not a right answer, and I don't want to get into arguments in this in the shop, but my preference when I'm rigging those chunks, either style, is fat side up, right? I want the fat part of that chunk to be facing upward. And the reason I want that is it makes a flatter surface on the back, right? I want this to be streamlined and flat to add to that fluidity of the bait. I don't want that piece of chunk to catch the water. I don't want there to be an edge there. So I like the fluidity of it. And I also like the fact that, just watch this, right? This is, this is my unscientific answer to fat side up on the chunk. When a fish comes and grabs it, when that jig is laying on the bottom, right? Look, I want him to grab that fatty, meaty section. I want him to feel that fat of that chunk, right? That's natural, that's what a, a bait fish or a crawfish would feel like. So I like that fat side up so that when he grabs it, he feels that fatter part of the chunk, okay? So is there a right answer? Probably not, but for me, it's fat side up. Um, man, here's the deal. If you're fishing a jig in cold water, winter time, you gotta be fishing a chunk. Use those different styles. Think about those two different rigging options and the profile, the size of the jig, and you're gonna get a lot more bites uh, in the wintertime. I hope you enjoyed this in the shop.
listen, stop real quick. Hit that subscribe button down there. Subscribe to my channel. We have a brand new In The Shop video coming to you every single week. If you're already subscribed, do me a favor. Tell your fishing friends about this channel, Mike Iconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you become a better angler. Um, good luck. Try that in the wintertime. You're going to catch more fish. See you later.